This week is the season finale. I am supposed to be in the kitchen cooking the menu I've named Jurassic Pork with a fair bit of assistance from Nick, but because of the ice storm, I'm stuck in the airport in the Dominican Republic. Also, thanks to Together We're Bitter and For All Ice Cream for sponsoring this dinner party. Also, charcuterie T-Rex. I feel like I'm the least qualified person to be doing a food show. We should actually, we should put you up to some kind of challenge. We should make you start developing a menu and you should be the final episode of this season's shoot. I think downtown Kitchener has had a bad rap for a long time. The chefs in Kitchener-Waterloo have a little bit of like a inferiority complex for with sure a do. big city. That's the chef in you, that's the, the human in you. This was so good. This is beautiful. This is an example of a perfect food. Our story starts off today in the Dominican Republic. My wife Lindsay and I were in Dominican to photograph and video a wedding. The wedding was on the Friday. Our season finale dinner party was on the Monday. I didn't think it would be a problem to get home in time. I was wrong. It is 2 p.m. and apparently there's a huge ice storm in Canada. Less than 24 hours from now, I should be in the kitchen with Nick preparing for Jurassic Pork, the greatest menu ever to exist. Um, it's a Jurassic Park themed menu uh, with, with a blooming onion named Jeff Goldblum, which I'm particularly proud about. But unfortunately, this ice storm so far has caused our flight to be delayed for five hours, which means we'll be getting in around two in the morning and hopefully the conditions in Toronto are actually drivable um, once we actually land. But our plane hasn't yet left Toronto, so the plane that's coming here to pick us up to bring us home uh, hasn't yet left Toronto. So I'm hoping that we get out of here today. Six o'clock, after six hours in the airport, our flight was finally canceled. Uh, I booked a flight through Air Canada to go to Ottawa that connects through to Toronto tomorrow morning. So I'm on the flight that lands at around 1 or 2 a.m. in Ottawa, and then I get on the 5 a.m. flight from Ottawa to Toronto to get home Unfortunately, Lindsay went with the wedding party and she's staying over. She didn't really love the, the adventure of going to Ottawa for a couple hours, sleeping in an airport, and then taking that hour flight back to Toronto. She would rather just sit by the beach. Apparently the new resort that they're at has a beautiful water park, so she'll probably be very happy there. There's a cat in this airport. The ice storm moved into Ottawa and as soon as my flight landed, my flight to Toronto got cancelled. So, taking the train. Turns out it's three trains to get to my car at Pearson Airport. Quite the adventure so far, um, from flying from Punta Cana to Ottawa to train to train to train to car. I'm about an hour and like 10 minutes away from Nick's restaurant. It is 11.35 right now. I should be there hopefully before 1 p.m. and uh, Nick and I can get started in the kitchen. I said check out these hams. Check out these hams you made, Taylor. Wow. I don't know how you did it. I'm super good at cooking. But they look perfect. That's amazing. Looks too good for a dinosaur dinner. That looks legitimately like a dinosaur though. Yeah, I know it's got that Fred Flintstone feel. Yeah. Right? They smell wicked. So those were in there for about 14 hours overnight. They're gonna be good. How's the blooming onion? Well, I've tried it twice now. I tried it once with a little onion and it didn't work at all. And then I tried harder with bigger onions for an actual, we did a dinner the other night at Uptown and I did it for that, but I called them onion roses, trademark. And, uh, <laughs> And they didn't work out super great either. The outside layers all worked really well, like say yeah. three or four layers, but insides was like balls of... Uncooked dough yeah, and totally. flour? Yeah, totally. Onion and flour. Fried it. Do you flip it halfway <laughs> no, through? No, I didn't. Okay. Who'd have thought An that onion I rose. really <laughs> need your food, your expertise on this? You're now playing a legitimate role. I'm glad you're back in the country. Yeah. I was a little worried. It was we, an adventure. We were going to do onion rings instead. I guess I'm going to go put together this T-Rex. Yeah, you're going to wash it. First, we're going to sanitize the T-Rex. 
and then we're going to build it. And then we're going to build it. And we're going to drape meat on it. It's way bigger than I expected. Is so it? I expect, yeah. Well, I expected it to be 32 centimeters. And 32 centimeter T-Rex. That's 32 inches. And then I think I'm going to download some sound effects, uh, T-Rex sound effects, just to just play near it. Put your phone underneath yeah. it. <laughs> it's going to be good. It looks like everything snaps together. Is it great? The only chef in the world that hasn't yet cooked anything, but I have washed a lot of skeleton parts for a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I also did email you like a menu with some pretty hilarious names. That's what we learned from the Lancaster Smokehouse. Write the joke first, exactly. menu second. When I, when I make menu items, I think joke first. Where it's gonna go. Food yeah. second. <laughs> I hope that he was serious, otherwise I've been misguided. There are instructions, all the parts are labeled, but by putting it in the dishwasher, it made them all illegible. No. <laughs> like, I think this is part seven, but it's like magic marker. Oh no, we've done our own undoing. <laughs>
How's my placement? It's, it looks like straight out of like a like a Lego cartoon movie or something. <laughs> it's like perfect. That's exactly the kind of ham people expect. <laughs> it's a showpiece. Nobody ever teaches you this when you go to school for computer programming. The idea is to build some height with the pepperettes, the carrots, and the tomatoes, and then drape the meats. Some very important work going down today. Now that you've got these things, put a foundation down of some meat. So this is a better draping meat. <laughs> it's not really what I expected. But we won't be able to move it. That's fine. Again. So it the, stays here. The dinosaur has to stay put. A little plate. It's kind of hard. The jiggle is the weirdest part of this entire thing. Mm. This is the uh, charcuterie T-Rex. Down yeah. here we have the Brie goat. Goat Brie. Brie would be a nice name for a goat. In the movie, the goat just doesn't know the T-Rex is approaching, and it's a, it's a scene. Taylor, Taylor was almost stranded in the Dominican this weekend. That's, well, he was yeah. stranded and he just got back today. So I thought I was going to have to do it all on my own, not just like mostly on my own as it's going. <laughs> and uh, I tried, I tried the Bloomin' Onion twice on the weekend and they were both like not super successful. So I did in turn actually need him. Yeah. Uh, and he gave us some good advice and there was an aha moment. So yeah, you were, right. congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yes, the... <laughs> if this meal doesn't meet your expectations, you do not go to Taco Farm's Facebook page to <laughs> review it. <laughs> you do not go to our Yelp page to review it or any of that. You go to the food show and you say, you're terrible cooks. <laughs> That's it. I'm gonna throw all the petals in too. Charcuterie bloom. This is the upgrade of blooming onion, which is far superior to the actual uh, blooming onion in regular production. Um, they look amazing. Oh, does it ever smell like ham? Ham. Okay. Right? Ham. Ham. <laughs> we, got, we got ham outside. <laughs> right. It's good that you guys have several kitchens. Yeah, it's good <laughs> that we're not walking from Harmony. I can't be trusted to do that. Yeah, I think you could have, it just falls apart. Nonetheless, we're here. So, I think I'm gonna actually make a quick sauce. I got a good idea. Check out these scalloped potatoes, right? Huge scallop potato, huge. Huge. It's a lot happening. Jurassic Park theme song going off. Can't license it legally, so we can't use it in the show, but it's here. We are halfway through service and things are going well. I'm glad all the drama got out in the Dominican Republic. 
Well, right now I'm indulging in the John Hammond. And, uh, I'm hopeful that it's not actually John Hammond and it's really pork. It's delicious. It's all really good. This one. It's my favorite item we're serving tonight. The Guernsey Girl. Getting grilled, salted. Next, doing all the hard work behind me. This is the most beautiful sight in a kitchen. A bunch of soft ivory Guernsey Girl cheese. Just a touch of lemon. I read this all from the label that we bought from Vincenzo's. Lost a dagnet. <laughs> um, that was fun. Did you guys enjoy it? Oh yeah. And where do your where do your reviews go again? If you want to review the meal, <laughs> not to Taco Farm. Thank you guys so much for coming. That was a lot of fun. The food was actually quite good, so we're happy. <laughs> we were worried. Some of us were worried. Some of us built dinosaurs. That took a while. Yeah. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for coming, supporting the show, supporting the local food scene. We're super happy. And the Leafs are up 3-2, if anyone cares. <laughs> Why'd you say no? Who said no? If anyone wants more donuts, there's a huge bowl of them. If you want charcuterie, you're a fool. It looks gnarly. Don't eat it anymore. <laughs> Help yourselves. Thank you guys, and enjoy your evening. I guess that's it. That was a lot of fun. Season one. Taylor did it. I did it. No Season drama. One. No drama. There was some. Yeah. You were stuck in another country. All the drama was not food related, yeah. which is positive. And uh, yeah, on to season two. <laughs>